it is presently recording. Hello, uh, Professor Peter Mostard, uh, to yet another questioning and interview. Hello again. Nice to be here. Most welcome. Most welcome. Thank you very much for participating. It's well appreciated. Mm. Uh, we have some follow up questions here. And uh, we try to reformulate one of the questions that proved, at least initially, to be a hard nut to crack. So we start mm. off on the heavy end. And that is the question could there be some sort of proof for Bayesian statistics? Mm -hmm. uh, some sort of foundation as an alternative. Mm -hmm. alternative. Uh, and there is like a B part of that question. And would that be something uh, preferable, something mm -hmm. that is useful, or something mm -hmm. that you would wish for personally? Mm -hmm. like two well, I, I, I'm, I'm still uncertain about the question, but let me try to talk a little bit about it. So, so first of all, when you say proof, uh, it, it, it depends on what you mean by proof, because basically, uh, I'm a mathematician, so, so I work on, um, um, I mean, the proof, uh, the meaning of proof could be a mathematical proof. Oh, yeah. and, and in that sense, uh, base statistics is, is provable in a sense, because it's it's really just probability theory. And, and that's a part of mathematics that is, you know, proven and, and um, I mean, the, the, the mathematics of it is, is quite robust. So uh, in, in terms of, of, you know, being a reflection of probability theory. So in that sense, it's provable, but, but maybe uh, you want to, to prove it in some other sense, like, like an applied theory when you apply it to to the real world is it is it provably um, better than other other um theories or, or classical statistics and so on yes. and, and that's um again um i mean you, you you could you could imagine that very widely to say is it can you prove that it would be better if um if um, the whole world used Bayesian statistics instead of classical statistics, and that's that's a very wide question because it, it you know there's lots of, of of you know how do you do the the practicalities of formulating uh, priors? How do you interpret this interpret the results in the real world? Uh, what you do with with the experience that people have? Uh, oh, yeah. you know, is it easy to use or difficult to use? And I mean there are all kinds of practical questions that that really makes it very um, difficult to, to, to prove in any way that, that it's um, better. But my, my, my general impression is that uh, Bayesian statistics in, in that very wide sense is gaining traction around the world so that um, uh, it's, it's more used now and people are discovering that, that uh, the, the features of it in, in practice are, are um, uh, beneficial. So, so it's it's sort of moving in that direction, but it's 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 a too wide uh, formulation to to give give any uh, precise mean uh, you know answer to. Then you could try to 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 ask yourself somewhere in the in the middle is um, are there are there some ways of of uh, describing Bayesian statistics as uh, in in a sort of mathematical statement that that is is uh, provable and also useful and uh, I think it's it's difficult because um, well you, what you can say is that if you if you formulate if you believe that if you if if you start with a um, probability distribution that reflects your knowledge oh, yes. in the sense that uh, you know the 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 um, uh, 
probabilities uh, of this uh, uh, this uh, model would reflect sort of the the frequencies with which you would would actually observe things if if you if and when you observe them um and if and if this sort of contains all probability all, all possibilities of the outcomes of the world that you are interested in this context then it is provable that that this is i mean it, it follows rather um, directly from the um, theory of, of probability that the way that you do the Bayesian inference is the way that that really gives the correct uh, or or in that sense optimally um, you know optimal probabilities corresponding to to real predictions so so in that sense it, but that's really a very simple mathematical um, uh, um, simple mathematical um, statement okay. so it, it's not it's not very deep um while i was thinking about this i i, I thought about an argument that connected oh. this to 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 biology so so maybe i can i can i it's, it's maybe it's not quite the answer to the question but i thought it was kind of an interesting thing can you can you prove that the brain is bayesian that was that's sort of the the the, the question that we, yeah. we talked earlier and in some sense, there is a kind of proof in that sense, because then you have to build out Bayesian statistics in the direction of decision theory or Bayesian decision theory. Okay, so so you have this, this uh, idea of, of making uh, predictions that you can, uh, you know, describe all the probabilities you get in data and you update your predictions using the data. And, and that can help you make predictions. But in real life, what you want to do is not just sit there and make predictions. What you do want to do, and in particular as a biological entity, we want to make actions, right? We want to do yeah. something. And how do we make the optimal action? Now, you can build a theory, uh, decision theory uh, for that. So if you, how do you make optimal actions under uncertainty. If you don't know what is going to happen with the different actions or, or with other things, how can you choose something that will probably be a good action? So what you can do then is that you can assign um, values, either um, you know benefits for the different um, uh, outcomes or costs for, for other outcomes. And then you can, um, compute uh, in a rigorous way what is the action that mm -hmm. has the uh, highest uh, or best uh, expected benefit or lowest expected cost so that that in a very general um, description is is decisions there now if you think about evolution uh, evolution is uh, there to to make us, I mean, it, it selects um, beings that are as efficient as possible of, of making good decisions, right? If, if they are, you know, thinking beings that, that make decisions. So then in that sense, you could say that evolution will tend to make uh, brains that make optimal decisions. Now, in a sort of, limited mathematical sense, Bayesian decision theory is uh, a way to derive optimal decisions. Ah, okay. So that would mean that evolution is likely to emulate in some sense um, decision theory because it is uh, optimal as, lo as long as you you believe that you have a prior you know description of all probabilities that that you can start with which we could imagine might be hard coded into our brain and then updated with with all the things that we learn so in that sense it's it's you could make an argument a, a scientific argument that evolution is likely to make our brains work in terms of Bayesian decision theory. And thus, in terms of prediction, it would make our brains work 
by by making uh, Bayesian predictions. Is this the case? <laughs> uh, I mean, can you are we really thinking in terms of Bayesian statistics? And again, I, I should have some some um, references here because I know this is this has been studied and um, uh, people have. Uh, looked at it, and I think some of some people have written books where they say uh, that this is the case that you can you can observe that people actually do think in Bayesian uh, ways, but only approximately. I mean, we're not computers, right? So we when we are uncertain about things, when we we want to learn um, or, or or make good decisions. We are afraid that some things might happen, and we avoid decisions that that you know, should lead to that outcome. But, um, you know, if it's not that likely, maybe we take the chance and we, we, we do that kind of thinking, but of course not mathematically in terms of numbers. So, so and, and, and it's also been proven that our ability um, to, to actually compute with small probabilities, I mean, if, if, you know, the risks, for example, we don't, judge risks in a completely rational manner if you yeah. if you if you um, uh, look at Bayesian statistics as as the uh, you know the, the the or 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 indeed probability theory as as the the gold standard of rational decisions then we don't really um, as biological entities make uh, those kinds of risk assessments that are completely rational so so i would say that approximately our brains work as um, Bayesian uh, decision uh, um, theory machines. And that is, um, th there's a reason for it because evolution would force us in that direction, but this is only appro approximately true. So <laughs> again, I'm, I'm sure I, I answered a dis different question than, than the one that was posed, but I think it's in the, in the um, vicinity of the things that we are discussing. Well, you did actually uh, Bayesian or uh, according to frequentist uh, actually predict the next question and uh, answer <laughs> it. So yes. you have three questions in one. <laughs> okay. Yes. Well. Well. To be fair, I, I guess I I did know a little bit about what you were going to ask. So. <laughs> okay. Very yeah. good. Uh, your uh, I I like your uh, conclusion there. Uh, if evolution favors the fittest. Mm -hmm. As we are told, uh, it should favor Bayesian statistics. Mm. And I usually do the, the same conclusion when it comes to quantum mechanics, mm -hmm. because uh, we do live in a quantum mechanical world. And it would make much more sense to well, assume, at least, or have a hunch that the brain, the body, everything about us should be quantum mechanical. And probably not classical. So <laughs> it's very similar. It's very similar. Mm -hmm. Quantum biology has just started and uh, the, the attitude is still, which it should be, I think, maybe there are some quantum mechanical things with the body or with the brain. And I think one of the few things that discovered uh, is about our uh, sense of smell. Mm -hmm. It is uh, quantum mechanical, actually, and uh, mm. they still sort of assume that the rest is uh, Newtonian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, in a way, they have to. Mm. It's a starting point. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, we have, uh, well, uh, this would be sort of an expansion of the second question that you mm -hmm. answered almost fully, that it would be reasonable, uh, speaking about evolution, but it would also be reasonable to think that different people has have different skills in predicting uh, mm. worse or better with the Bayesian statistics. Mm. Uh, for instance, Stephen, Steve Jobs, the former CEO of Apple, is probably mm. much better me <laughs> doing Bayesian statistics. 
What do you think about that? Yes, no, no, I, 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 I agree that, um, I mean, the, the, obviously, if you, if you have different people or different systems or different algorithms that make predictions, obviously, yeah. they, they make uh, better or worse jobs. And, and, and first of all, you know, we, we need to be clear of how we judge these predictions. And, and the only way we, we can is to say that over time, then uh, you know predictions that that are you know if you if you predict that something will happen with a forty percent probability, then on average those types of predictions it doesn't have to be the same prediction over and over again, but but different types of predictions of that type should happen uh, with forty percent uh, frequency. So, so you need to somehow make that kind of, of um, connection with the real world, and and that's not completely easy to do in a rigorous way. But but you know something in that direction is is needed in order to connect this to to what it means to make it that some people or, or systems make better predictions than than others. Um, and of but of course, I mean we 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 know that they do right. Uh, and for people, of course, that that is partially because we are not uh, computers. We don't do this these uh, predictions very. I mean, we might be very afraid of things, and so we we put the risk of that you know too high, and we avoid that that uh, that thing, or we are too focused on on some risks, for example. But also, and more fundamentally, this points to, to uh, a weakness of this, this whole Bayesian paradigm, because, uh, I mean, the Bayesian paradigm rests on putting a prior probability to all, um, all uh, you know, you start with a set that represents somehow all possible outcomes oh, yes. in some simplification of the world, and then you assign probabilities to that set. How do you do that? Do you do it correctly or not? This is this is sort of the, the prior, right? In in the Bayesian statistics, and and the need to do that or or how you do that is is sort of where you put all the weaknesses of of the, of the Bayesian statistics. And of course, different priors will then lead to different results and different you know qualities of the predictions that you make. So if you have a very simple model with four small outcomes or, or ch strangely assigned priors, then you will make predictions that are, that are bad. If you have a good prior, then, then the predictions will be better. So, so it's really, uh, it's true that, that uh, there are very different uh, qualities of, of uh, predictions from different people or different systems. And it depends both on not doing the math correctly if you're a person, or and also more fundamentally on the choice of the prior, which is uh, something that you cannot avoid. Um, and and um, as I said, I, my belief is that the reason why we as people do make reasonable uh, choices and reasonable predictions is that our brains are, through evolution, hard-coded into making prior a prior um, model of the world, so to speak, when we are, when we are born, that is kind of reasonable and updatable with with everything we learn over over uh, time. So th this is my opinion. So, if I get it right, there is a sort of inter or interconnectedness between the inner, which is the prior that we were mm. born with, and or we assume, and the outer. So it's more, it's not as hard as in the classical model, if I think in my, in the mm. classical physics, everything was out there. Mm -hmm. Those computers registering like big video cameras. Uh, mm. I got that feeling when I studied uh -huh. uh, a subject that's changed completely thanks to these things you mentioned mm. and that's the science of cognition yeah and at that time we were just simple 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 video cams mm. recording storing making uh, uh, statistical uh, pre 
frequentist statistics mm. and then it was a predictable outcome when it came to the action. Mm, mm. And of course, there was no, my professor used to say, of course, nobody believes in free will mm. in any sort of sense. That was a domineering thought in 1997. Mm. Mm. Uh, that changed completely. It's, mm. <laughs> it's a whole different world today. Mm. Yeah. And that, that sort of leads me to the second uh, part of, or third question it is actually, mm -hmm. uh, and that's about free will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and yes, yes, this is a, yeah. just let me introduce quantum mechanics as also, mm -hmm. in some ways, not so, maybe it's not so much within psychology or science of cognition or neurology, but it has in philosophy to some part instigated once more free will. Mm -hmm. Because in quantum mechanics, you have this weird, almost random thing that is weird, more or less, your choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think Bayesian statistics, when coming to us as biological creatures, can make us more of free choice than the previous uh, idea of frequentists? Ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a very difficult question. And and for me, in in my mind, um, I must say that the the question of free will is not connected to to the type of of, of statistics or or the type of, of of you know of the things that we have talked about so far. Oh. Um, for me, I actually, you know, when, when it comes to free will, I actually look at it as a, as a question of point of view. Mm -hmm. Because I think that um, free will, I mean, when, when you discuss, I mean, philosophically, when you discuss the world, uh, you have to have some kind of starting point and you can start with your own mind or you can start with your own mind's view of other other people's mind and and there's not really as i see a logical inconsistency in saying that in the first model when you when you start at a starting point your own mind then then you have free will and then if you if you look at somebody else and try to predict their their um, you know how how they work it's it they don't have free will. No, no. Uh, it's it's a question of point of view. It's it's yeah. it can still be sort of. Um, it doesn't mean that I am different from you because I. No, no, it, no. It, it's, it's a matter of where where uh, how how you describe this thing, but I, I suspect this this uh, way of thinking is is not so related to to your thinking because you. For you, it's more the question of is is randomness real or not? Maybe, or, or yeah. de deterministic, or do we have do we live in a deterministic or a random world somehow, or is is that is that sort of? Well, at least uh, as you say, uh, they usually talk about call this a first person perspective, but that's mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. I, ego, uh, whereas. Uh, in the third person perspective, he or him or you, mm -hmm. if uh, the free will disappears. So that, that, yes. Yeah, I can buy that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it makes sense. It does yeah. make sense. Yeah. Since statistically it disappears in my predictions or whatever model you use for predicting yeah. someone else's behavior. Yeah. Uh, George Buzaki, this uh, neurologist, I will try to put a link to his okay. horribly hard name spell mm -hmm. I, if I can do it in on the chat I don't know yes. the chat in the recording here but it should be it should be uh, recorded also but uh, of course you can is, is Hungarian of course mm -hmm. there is something missing there but it's a bit like that yes so, it appeared yeah uh, he, he has uh, made a lot of video clips so it's uh, for you who listen, it's very, very accessible. It's a very nice mm. presentation technique. 
Uh, he's, I, I think he's, I'm not 100% sure, but he's leaning to a sort of mixture between random and uh, algorithmic uh, thinking, somewhere in between, uh, where the brain, as he puts it, uh, to make it more radical, the brain is not a receiver of information, it is a producer of information. Mm -hmm. And that sounds a bit like prior and connectedness mm. to the outside. Mm. Yeah. Well, I would have to, to read more about it to, to comment more. Yeah, please do. Please do. Because it's, uh, the more you talk about the one talk about these things, the more it's opening up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It, that's it, it tends to happen with philosophy i guess <laughs> yeah we, you, uh, you, and it gets more interesting in a way mm. as we uh, well uh, i have a question from jan and if you think about this model of the brain as being a bayesian mathematical the, sorry the which model uh, if we start with the idea of george bujaki yeah okay. yeah as, uh, a predicting machine or a okay. Bayesian maker or being of Bayesian statistics. Mm -hmm. uh, learning in that case would be uh, rather different uh, than the old model, which was just acquiring more and more information. So it's mm -hmm. more quantitative, how many yeah. gigabits, yeah. Or gigabits. Now it's a bit different. Uh, what do you think about that? I, 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 to the extent that I understand it now, I, I, I think it is very nice and very uh, proper model because, I mean, babies make actions directly when they are born, right? So this is what they do. They, 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 um, they have a certain idea or, or some kind of model that we cannot really represent because it's without words, but, you know, they have some model of the world and then they do some action and then yeah. you see the consequences of that. And from that, they learn. And then from that, they, uh, they adjust their actions. And this is, this is, you know, it, it fits very much into the uh, Bayesian um, uh, decision theory context. You know, you, 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 you know, they, they scream a lot and then uh, they discover that this, this has good consequences. And then later in life, they discover that screaming, screaming too much <laughs> is, is maybe not a good thing. And, you know, you, you have all of these uh, phases uh, of, of learning uh, where they develop their, their um, context. So, so I, I think that, um, I, th I think it's uh, it sounds like a very good model, but of course, um, in terms of I mean the the, the the if you want to connect this to to the Bayesian uh, thinking, the the difficult jump is sort of again what is the prior because it's 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 very I mean in it, when we do this mathematically we do very. We make simplifications, of course, and then in these simplifications, we don't cover all and anything that could happen. And then something happens outside of those possible yeah. uh, things. And then how uh, how do you connect that information? How do you build your model with you know com something that is completely outside of of your current model? Uh, so so that's something that's um, you know, not easily incorporated into this this uh, simplistic patient thinking. So, so you could say that that in order to to really have a, a theory for for biological learning, you need something stronger, maybe some something more in terms of evolution uh, than than sort of basic uh, Bayesian statistics, because the Bayesian statistics, at least that's it's taught in 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 you know, basic courses is that you, you you start with a prior and then that prior is fixed throughout. But that's not, I mean, in real life, we have we have these expanding models, you know, our models become more and more complex over time. And and uh, it's not so easy to represent it in, in Bayesian, in simple Bayesian uh, theory. Yeah, yeah. I, I see what you mean. Uh, 
I was just thinking, I'm going out on a limb here. Mm -hmm. uh, there is one of these reflexes you can see in infants. Um, mm -hmm. When they move their arm by randomness, mm -hmm. their head will follow. So mm -hmm. the head will be in the direction of the hand. Mm -hmm. The child cannot see the hand. Mm -hmm. Speech is still not developed, the infant mm -hmm. is a toddler. But in the end, it will learn to focus looking at the hand mm -hmm. yeah. and sort of uh, do the learning process. And maybe yeah. the, this reflex, which we have no other explanation for, yeah. could be a sort of, it happened to be a prior and yeah. Yeah. Very useful in the end. What do you think yeah. about that? I, I, I complete that. That's exactly how I would describe it. I, oh. I think that our, our brain, when we are born, or when, when we start to, to use it, which is before we are born, uh, yeah. it, 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 represent, it, it can be described as some kind of very vague prior. Oh, yeah. and, 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 and because we do have all these reflexes, we do a lot of things that you know, well, all children do, as, as you say, they, they do the same thing and it has to come from somewhere. And, and in a modeling context, that would mean you would put that information in the prior because it, it's not something that's learned or, or you know, they develop over time, it, they, they do it directly. And I, I agree, I would, I would describe that as in, in the prior, but of course it's, it's, it's you know, the human brain, even, even before, when when it starts to work uh, is so incredibly complex and and you know all the information that we get through our senses is also so incredibly complex so that it's 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 really it's very hard to even imagine um, a connection between that kind of prior and the, and the priors as we use you know that i use in my my courses because <laughs> they're so infinitely less complex right well, so. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. I think we open up a, a very interesting area here. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just amazing. Uh, the ideas that are swirling in my head now, uh, oh, that's a lot. Uh, maybe we should end here. Yeah, yeah, we can end there and then we can meet again and maybe uh, yeah, we, can, we can have more communication with the listeners. This uh, was incredibly interesting. Uh, yeah, thank you a lot. It, it's very, really very interesting happy. to have these uh, these um, conversations. So I'm I'm very happy to to be part of it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Have a very nice afternoon. You too. Bye bye, Peter. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank you.